Hello again and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and today I'm going to show you how to import multiple files from a folder to Power BI. So why do we even want to import multiple files from a folder? Let's be honest, not all users and report creators have the option to connect straight to a database. Most of us, mortals, we have to access our company's database via another tool and export the data on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, and then combine this file to create our report. It is actually not that difficult with Power BI. We already have a built-in feature, Get Data from a Folder, that does all the heavy lifting for us. It saves time, and we only have to go through those transformation steps once, essentially teaching Power BI how to process our data. But there are a few bits that potentially can cause some trouble. So today, I'll walk you through six different examples, starting from a really easy and simple one to more advanced scenarios. Are you ready? Let's do it. The first and probably the easiest option is when we have full control over the data. What do I mean by that? We generate the raw reports from our system. We control the headers, number of columns, sheet naming convention, and all of that. If you have a look at the Excel files, all of them were created by using the exact same template. We have two columns, one for the date and another one for the cells, and we have a single sheet called Sheet 1. To import these to Power BI, we just need to go through some steps. We go up to the top, click on Get Data, More, then File, and select Folder. So here in the folder path, I just copy paste the path, click on OK. And in the next screen, Power BI tells us what files are available from that folder. Down at the bottom, we have a couple of options. Combine and transform. That means Power BI will load the files and tries to automatically combine them and let us add additional steps in the transformation. Combine and load means that Power BI just combine our files and load straight into the model. Then we have load and transform data buttons that those do not combine the data automatically. So at this stage, I guess most of us will click on the combine button. I personally like to click on the combine and transform button just to validate that everything is cool. Before we get our combined query, we have to teach Power BI what to pick from each file. On the top, we have the sample file. By default, it's always going to be the first file, and if you want, you can select another file from the folder. For the time being, let's just use the first file. Then I click on Sheet 1. We can see a little preview of our data, and I'm just going to hit OK. After that, as I said before, Power BI does the heavy lifting for us, and we will be presented a nice combined query or table that we can just simply use in our report. We can see the file names under the source name column, and then the combined report itself. On top of that, Power BI also created some helper queries. In here, we can find all the logic that Power BI used to create our combined query. Easy peasy, right? Now what happens if for any reasons one of the sheets are no longer called sheet 1? Let's change that in the third file to sheet 2. We will receive an error message. Remember, we told Power BI to pick up the data from all files from sheet 1. But in the third file, there are no sheet 1. So it cannot pick up anything. But we know that it is actually the same format, it's just on a different sheet. To solve this, we need to tweak the process. If we go back to the transform sample file and have a look at the second step, which is the navigation step. At this part of the query, we can see that sheet 1 is actually hard-coded. 
So what happens if we just simply change this to zero? It works just fine. So if we know that we get the data on a certain sheet in Excel, we can reference that sheet and just like that, Power BI will be able to work with the data. As I said, the first example was the simplest. We control the data, we control the file, and we control the location. In the second example, we control the file and the location where we save those files. But what happens if we are talking about the shared folder and someone else saves another type of file into our folder? Let's say a troublemaker Word document. Again, it's all about teaching Power BI how to work with available files in the folder. If we go back to the first step, we can actually filter out certain file formats. Let me get rid of the doc file. And here we go. We are back to normal. Using the same logic, you can filter out other files as well. Let's say that we have sales and cost reports in the same folder. You can use the filter in the file name to only include files that doesn't contain cost in the file name. And you can do heaps more than just that. And the two final bits in today's episode are the most challenging scenarios when it comes to importing data from a folder. I think those are the steps that we all hate. What happens when you have no control over the files that you've been given? To demonstrate this, let me change just one teeny tiny little bit for the last two scenarios. First, I'm going to replace sales to sales and the dollar sign. It still has the same meaning as in sales amount, but adding the dollar sign confuses Power BI, as you will see. Picked up the data nicely from the first file and the second one, but nothing from March. So how do we solve this? First, we have to understand what's going on. The reason why Power BI know how to handle February and January is because under the transform sample file query, it automatically promoted the first row to headers. Let's have a look. But the header in the last file is a bit different than the other files. So to solve this, we have to get rid of all the steps where any column reference is in a sense hard coded in the transform file and do some massaging in the combined query. Now we have the combined query working perfectly. And what happens if we want to add an extra column? Let's say that from a certain month, we need to include an additional column. We want to do that without changing prior month data. In that case, all we need to do is tell Power BI that it has to use another file as our sample file. We can select the sample files when we are combining those files, but let's be honest, most of these scenarios are actually going to happen after you already have something imported. So let's just use again the first file and do the import. 
we can see that we have all the files imported, all three of them. We have dates and sales. But remember, in March, we added the discount column as a new column. And if we want to change the sample file, we can go to the sample file tool. And you can see it has February selected. Once again, it was the first file in the folder. Under the navigation step, you can see that it's actually picking up the first file. So what happens if we just simply change that to the second one? Now you can see it's using March as an example, as a sample file. And if we go back to our combined query, we can see the discount column immediately appearing here. We have values for March, but nothing for January and February. Of course, in real life, it is possible that you have to combine all of those tactics to get where you want it to be. Now, just remember, once you cover all of those pain points, refreshing your report is going to be a walk in the park. I hope you found this video useful and I was able to shed some light on the import from folder feature in Power BI. If you have any other questions or suggestions, just let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new episode. Stay tuned and see ya!